how much you think you know, we don't know the half of God. And there's so much more. So we have to seek Him again. You know, and God wants to revive His people. You know, and we have very challenging times. So I want people to be strong with these things but, um, and to seek Him because you will find there's so much more to know. You know, it's the gift of telling a story that keeps people's attention. It, that that's an amazing gift, and you've got it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the God's book grace. of mysteries pulls you along, and and this is good, yeah, uh, well, particularly for people who who really have not come to the Lord. Yeah, maybe they're a little yeah. standoffish oh, yeah. about the Bible. Yeah, we've been hearing stories and st- after stories of people coming to the Lord, reading it, and it's, it's it doesn't matter if you've been a pastor, you know the Lord for ages, but or you you don't know the Lord at all, and that's why people are giving it to their friends. Well, the thing is that for those who don't know in a nutshell, you're getting, it's hundreds of mysteries of God, and mysteries of the ages, mysteries of heaven, mysteries of the secret writings of the rabbis, mysteries yeah. of the real things in the Bible you cannot see in English, you know, that right. are amazing. You know, um, you know, things like the mystery of the secret angels is one of the things. You know, yeah. There's something called the how to live from the future. Um, this, it's a secret from Hebrew, or how to change your past is in the Hebrew as well. Um, you know, the, the seven mysteries of your life, that there are seven events in your life, there's a blueprint of your life that's actually in the Bible that people don't know. Um, the, the, the mystery of you, you know, finding your destiny, because that's part of the mystery too. You know, our life is a mystery until we find God, you know, and, but even finding the destiny. So there's so many mysteries of even things like how America, America came into existence is part of a biblical mystery. We may touch on it on this program, but there's so much. You know. And then I put, as you said, I put a story behind it that every, there's a man called the teacher who's taking this other man, the disciple, throughout the desert, one year in the desert, on the mountaintops, caverns, and every day he reveals another mystery of God. So therefore, that's why you have 365. So it's a year. So you can read it as a devotional, you can, you know, but you're going to get a mystery every day. It's going to get a lot with that. But you can read it right through too, and you can read it forwards, backwards, <clears throat> however you like. But yeah. it, so it's going to take you in on this journey. And at the end of every, every mystery, the teacher tells the disciple how the key to apply that mystery to your life, because it's not just about hearing, it's about changing your life. And I believe if you apply it, it will yeah. change your life. Well, until I read this book, I really never had thought about using the quote mystery as a way to lead people along into the truth yeah. of the Scripture. yeah. You know, uh, you can knock on the door and mm-hmm. say, I- "I'd like for you to read this track about right. salvation." And right. Slam. Right. The, door, <laughs> right. the door gets shut. Right. It's because the the enticement of luring people along into something <clears throat> that's beautiful a, <clears throat> it has good, to be, has to be done in a certain way. It's a good enticement because God. That's how God draws us. I have drawn you. You know, because uh, you know, a mystery is is not the closing of a door; it's the opening of a door that was closed. Ah. You know, so, yeah. and <laughs> actually, there are amazing. mysteries in there about the opening door in the temple, the supernatural things that happen in the temple. That just remind me, but we may touch on it. Let's talk about uh, some of the mysteries of Bible prophecy uh, mm-hmm. for, from the Book of Daniel. Yeah, uh, Daniel talks about four beasts. Yes. What's yeah, and, and you you talk about the mystery of the fourth, fourth yeah. beast. Yeah, there's one. There's something that people don't really. And this is this is a this is what's in the original language that people miss when they when they don't read the original language. It talks about that fourth beast. That fourth beast is many things, but it represents the the final state of man, the final civilization of man. Mm. And yet it describes them. It says, and the fourth beast, it says, was different from the others. Now you just read, okay, it was different from the others. Well, it was. There was something about it. You know, the other ones are purely based on animals, com- composites, but this one has metal. I mean, it's, it's strange kind of, as well. But yeah. the, word, <clears throat> the word in Hebrew for the different, it's not just different, it's, it's, it's shaneh, which literally means it, the fourth beast was altered. It was altered or unnatural. Or, it was, or you can even take mm. artificial in that. It was altered. In other words, the final civilization of man is going to be an, artific- it's going to be an unnatural one. It's going to be departing from nature. We kind of talked about the mystery of the apostasy before. Yeah. Well, it goes with that. But that final thing that we're seeing now is man becoming not like man anymore. You know, women like not women, but also yeah. and also civilization becoming artificial. You know, and well, that that's and people are talking about artificial intelligence. Everything artificial. Artificial. Artificial this, artificial that. It, it scares you to death. Yeah, awesome. and that word shana is all about that. You wow. know, I mean, so yeah. That's and just so one of the Daniel's words. fourth beast. Unveils that little mystery. That one little word has uh, unveils an an entire gigantic a realm of what's happening right now in our midst. Yes, this is amazing. Now, and and again, if you're interested, uh, then I've got the book for you right here. (laughs) Let's talk about another mystery. Yeah, well, one of one of the most beautiful ones I love is the mystery of the bride and groom, and that 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 sums up. I mean, that's about God 
everyone who's watching, no matter if you're saved or not saved, it's, a, it's about you, it's for you. It's, it's prophecy is in that. The whole Bible is the, is the wedding. At the end, there's the wedding. At the end, there's no accident for that. I'll just, I'll just give a little part of it. And this is one of the okay. streams. This is the mystery streams because you read this. The teacher says to the disciple, the meeting says, come, we're going to see a wedding. And they go to the wedding and, and there's people who live in the, in the tent, in tent dwellers in the desert and they live as, the, as if, you, if they were in the Bible. So they're having the biblical wedding. So throughout the whole, the whole book you're watching this wedding progress and that's the mystery. So I'll say this, in the Bible in order for the wedding to happen, in the, in the Hebrew wedding, the, the bridegroom, something had to happen, the bridegroom always had to make a journey from his house to wherever his, wherever his bride lived. He had to go across the village, across the land, he had to go. She, she was poor, didn't matter, mud hut, had to go there. The bridegroom has to go to the bride, has to go to her house, and in the house of the bride he proposes to her, he offers a treasure for her that's mm-hmm. called in Hebrew the mohar. And, and if she says yes, then, then at that moment she becomes the bride. They have a covenant, they share a cup of wine together, and then he leaves her, and they're separated for at least a year, and she prepares herself for him, for a new life she's never seen. He prepares a home for her. Mm. And until the great wedding day comes, when he comes dressed up as a king with, with torches at night with his brides, with his men on his side and a great procession, they come. He always has to make two comings. He comes to, mm. to, comes to her. <clears throat> she's waiting. She's bathed. She, the bride is, is now ready. She is adorned adorn, adorn as a queen, getting ready. They see each other face to face. She uncovers her veil for the first time. He, they, they're just standing face to face as bride and groom. Then they are lifted on a sedan chair and they're carried away in this great procession from her house. She says goodbye to it, fades away. And then she sees this house she has never seen before that's been built for her in love. And she's taken inside and they sit under the hoopah, the wedding canopy, as king and queen. They slip into uh, a, the bridal chamber and they become one flesh. Well, that whole, that, what I just told you, that's the... That has the whole mystery of the Bible. That is the mystery of each of us. We're each born to be the bride. Whether you're either the bride or you're born to be the bride. That's why we're never complete until we find the bridegroom. And that's why we're always trying to marry ourselves to something, money, something, whatever yeah. it is. <clears throat> until we get married. Well, he's the bridegroom. God is the bridegroom. But according to the mystery, for the mystery to happen, cannot happen unless the bridegroom makes the journey from his house to the house of the bride. 2,000 years ago, the bridegroom, God, made the journey from his house to the house of the bride, earth. From heaven to earth. Not across the town, not across the village, across eternity. Came to our land, and that's why he's the God who comes to us. The bride in the Hebrew never goes to the bridegroom. We can never make it to God, mm. but he's the one who comes to our life. He's the bridegroom, always knocking on our life. And, 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 and there's so much that I won't go through, but I'll tell you, there's a mystery to that gift that he gives. There's a mystery to their time of preparation. There's a mystery of him going back. What's God doing right now? He's preparing a place for the bride. That's, you know, that's what what's he, he what, What's he going to do? Yeah. He's going to come again in glory. There's so much to this. I mean, the whole Bible, and it's for every one of our lives. And you're telling a highly condensed version of this. This is, not, this is <laughs> condensed, 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 little portion <laughs> Reader's Digest condensed on that. I'm just giving you a taste. I, but it's I, beautiful. And, it. and his book is built around the concept of things you haven't thought about until now. I mean, yeah, and suddenly... Thoughts. They begin cool? to click, and then it makes it clicks. That's yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And and this is the good thing. Uh, yeah. Well, let's let's co- yeah. carry out the the theme of the mystery. Well, there's a there's a mystery that actually has to do with America. That America existence has to do with an ancient mystery in the Bible. Now, how how so? Well, one of the mysteries in there is called the ninth of Av mystery. Okay. And the ninth of Av mystery. I'll just in a nutshell. I won't go. There, but there's a certain day in Hebrew history, Jewish history where calamity comes. The yeah. first temple destroyed, ninth of Av. Second temple, same day, ninth of Av. Uh, Jewish people expelled from, from France, ninth of Av. England, ninth of Av. Spain, ninth of Av. Even the Holocaust, ninth. But I'm not going to focus on that for a moment. There's another, because there's another mystery called the tenth of Av redemption. The day after the calamity, God is always redeeming. Mm -hmm. When the Jewish people lose one refuge, He gives them another refuge. He's always going to keep them alive. He's going to keep them. So there's a redemption. So the redemption begins the next day, tenth of Av. So here's the thing. A few hundred years ago, Jewish people are fleeing for their lives. They, they're fleeing. They have the greatest shelter they ever had, greatest refuge. They have to leave or they get killed. They're fleeing. They get into ships. They're fleeing all over like crazy. It's the ninth of Av again. Okay, so they're fleeing that. Uh, in that, in those same harbors, so where this land, where the day, the date, or the year of this tragedy is 1492. Hmm. Where did this take place? Spain. 
You always, you always read about Columbus. Yeah. This is the real story here. So yeah, this, this is the biblical story. On the ninth of Av, they have to they leave. They lost it. In the same harbors is the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Same day, same place, same everything, same every. And the next day, once the tenth of Av, the three the three ships set sail. God, look, get this. They're going to discover America. America's birth is linked to this ancient mystery. And that is that on the day that the Jewish people lose their greatest refuge, God prepares what will become their greatest refuge the same time America is going to be born. America is going to be the greatest refuge for the Jewish people in the history of, of, of the world after Israel, and it's going to be the greatest, greatest friend of Israel. So God has already prepared that, and, and if the Jewish people are blessed with the refuge, Everybody's going to be blessed. So we are all blessed. Our parents are blessed. Our whole lives have been blessed by this that goes back to Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar on the ninth of Av. I mean, it's amazing. America. Wow. Now, as we make uh, th this program today, <clears throat> the uh, uh, great event is just ahead of us uh, in, uh, in January uh, in, in which a, a new president is going to be sworn in. Yes. Uh, a big event for national yes. Israel. Uh, because it is our prayer that, that our new president will be a friend mm -hmm. of Israel. Yes. Let's talk about the, yeah. uh, sort of the mysterious aspects of, of America. A few things. You know, <clears throat> one is, I'll say this. In, first off, in, in The Harbinger, the first book I wrote, which yeah. talks about the template that America's been following away from God, same right. template of ancient Israel. Harbingers have appeared then, they're appearing now, warning of judgment. But in that template, God also gives reprieves. He gives chances. He gives windows of grace. When he was calling to Israel, it wasn't just that Israel was judging them. He gave them prophets. He gave them callings. He gave them reprieves. Uh, you know. So I believe we're watching a reprieve right now. And that is that it's a chance. It's a window. It's a window, first of all, for America to turn back. Because had the other party won, things would have been sealed for a generation. You know? And so, we are, so we're watching, and it's not about a man, because you know, there's a great risk and we need to pray. But that's one thing. The other thing people don't realize, in The Harbinger, I, was, I wrote The Harbinger in 2010, came out in 2012. It's still going out. There are things in there that are coming true. Uh, people don't realize that, that inside the pages of The Harbinger is Donald Trump. I was led to put him in. And there's a mystery between Don, about Donald Trump and The Harbinger. You know, so what I would say is this, but we have to, first of all, very important, if we put our trust in parties or man or men, or we're going to become great by our own power, then we're doing what, I, what ancient Israel did. We'll be great again. We, it can be a disaster. But if we use this period as believers to go full blast for the Lord and full blast for revival, repent it, starting with us, if my people, it can be amazing. So that's what we have. Now for Israel, there's something else going on there. You know, Israel, the Bible says, you know, in the last days, as you well know, um, that all nations will come against Israel over Jerusalem. Well, oh, yeah. we just had this right now, you know, we just had this conference of 70 nations and basically telling Israel that they're going to have to give up Jerusalem in some form. The United Nations, as this president is going out, this, the last president is going out, Obama, America abandoned Israel at the United Nations. You know, and and in, the, in that resolution, it doesn't, just say, it doesn't just condemn them. It literally says that Jerusalem is Palestinian territory. Jerusalem yeah. does not belong to Israel. Now, now, listen, long before there was the United Nations, God passed his own resolution on this and said, this is he Jerusalem did. belongs to Israel. So it doesn't, but here we did that. That's a dangerous thing. Now, there's an Abrahamic covenant. Whatever you do to Israel can be done to you. So um, it could be saving grace that another administration is coming in and hopefully they'll reverse our part of it. You know? But there's something else. Remember Obama with the election? He, he, really, he wanted Netanyahu, when Netanyahu was running for re-election, he wanted him out. And, and we supported, he actually, we supported organizations working against Netanyahu. I and mean, we actually intervened in that election. Didn't work. But whatever you do to Israel, the Abrahamic Covenant, which is in the Book of Mysteries, will be done to you. So Obama did that. Now what happened right now is, what's happening right now is because Donald Trump won, Obama's legacy of all these executive orders passed are going to be undone. They're going to be reversed. They're going to be the the every executive these executive orders because it wasn't Congress. So therefore, what you do to Israel, it was to it was to erase the stand of Netanyahu. Well, now Obama's stand is being erased. Whatever you do to Israel, be careful. Now, going back to uh, the twenty third of December, uh, 
when uh, the United Nations uh, voted on a resolution, a resolution 2334 and passed it, mm -hmm. essentially making uh, uh, the uh, territory beyond the Green Line, the old city, uh, Temple okay. Mount, uh, Palestinian territory, uh -huh. and you were well aware of that. It struck me at the time that uh, that, that vote came down just before uh, Hanukkah. The, the Hanukkah, 24th of Kislev. Yes. And, and there's a famous Hanukkah date in 167 BC when Antiochus IV Epiphanes tried to take mm -hmm. away the, the temple and Jerusalem from yes. the Jewish people. And that anniversary date just loomed large in my thinking yeah. when, at this UN vote. Yeah, yeah. God, no accidents, and God knows how to plan these things. That we're, and it, the, even the date speaks a message. Speaks right. a, but you're not, going to, you're, you're not going to take away Jerusalem in the end because God has said it, God will establish it. The Book of Mysteries, by the way, has 365 mysteries in it. Even as those mysteries we just talked about, Hanukkah. <coughs> and uh, the Hanukkah mystery is, yes, is, and is in here. Yes. And by the way, as I'm looking at this list of mysteries, it's just um, amazing. Let me, uh, let me read a few of these. The, the Baalim. Yes. Uh, I'm just kind of at random yeah. looking through here. Here's one called the Masmara. Now, <laughs> what in the world is that? You're You're gonna have you have to, to read it to, <laughs> <laughs> to find yeah. out. And invariably, when you do, Jonathan links something you've never heard about to something that you can understand, yes. which is yes. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, um, again, you know, we have to be seeking God will show us. And, and so the, um, the, I'll, th I'll throw in something just that people don't realize. You know, you're reading the Bible and you're reading English, which is great. I don't want to, you know, diminish that. That's wonderful. But there's so much you cannot get in English because it's in the original language and you cannot quite translate certain things. So I'll give you an example. Okay. In Isaiah 53, it says, you know, it says Messiah is going to die. But it says, in his de with a rich man in his death. It doesn't say that in Hebrew. It says, with a rich man in his deaths. Hmm, not, that's weird. Why would they, in his deaths? Because Messiah is not dying his death. He's dying our deaths. He's hmm. dying, every one of our deaths is in that Hebrew word. <laughs> the, the record of our old life is gone is in that Hebrew word. And, and not only that, when the, I said when the, when the Bible, when the Hebrew does that, it's telling you that the, re, the word is not, cannot capture how, how, how gigantic this thing is. What it's saying is what he died was more than death. Death, the word death, what he did for us does not even, death does not even touch it. It was so gigantic what he did for us. That's not, another thing is along those lines, in the Hebrew you can't say that God has mercy. In the Hebrew Bible, it doesn't say God has mercy. It says God has rachamim, and rachamim doesn't mean mercy. It means mercies. The, the word for our sins is mm. singular, but the word for His mercy is plural. What does that mean? No matter how much sin you have, His mercies are always going to be more. You're never going to exhaust the mercy and the love of God, ever. And I'll throw you just one more. And this is the Greek. This okay. is the, even the Greek. There's Greek mysteries in here. And one of them is that, that you know, one of the words we read about worship in the New Testament. But the, one of the key words of worship is the word proskuneo. Proskuneo doesn't exactly mean what it means literally. This is not interpretation. It literally means to kiss. What is worship? It is to kiss God. What is worship? It is to be kissed by God. It says in Song of Solomon, let him kiss me. It is to be the most intimate thing you could ever know and the most joyous thing you ever know. Kiss. What is worship? It's as simple as a kiss. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> That's all these things. Well, you've got my attention. What can I say? <laughs> the mystery of the rabbis you mentioned. Yes. Tell, tell yeah. us about well, that. Well, there's so many things. This is one of the streams. There's so many things hidden in the hidden writings of the rabbis. I'll give you another one. I'll just okay. give, that the rabbis actually record that all these supernatural things began to happen in the temple. Strange, strange things. Now, the New Testament says one supernatural says that the veil, when Messiah died, was split into saying that the way to God was now open, was open. But there were other barriers. There was a golden door to the temple. There were other barriers for you to get to God. But the rabbi said all these strange things started happening. One of them, they said, was the, that door to the temple just started opening by itself. You couldn't open it. It was gigantic. It just started opening by itself, saying mm -hmm. that the way was open to God. It was open. And one rabbi was rebuking. It says they started talking to the door and said, stop doing that, basically. It just opened by itself. And they say, and he kept doing it. And they, closed, it opened, and they said, when did, this, when did this start happening? The rabbis pinpointed, they say just about the year, everything went crazy, cosmic change, about the year 30 AD. 30 mm. AD when Messiah died, rose, or around that, year, around that time, he said they, the rabbis said a cosmic change took place, the way to God was open. So if you don't believe it anyway, listen, if the rabbis are telling you this, and they shouldn't be telling you this, they're telling you this, 
the way to God is open. <laughs> you know, it strikes me as you talk, and I hadn't thought about this until this very moment, but, but uh, what a wonderful book uh, to present to uh, your Jewish That's brethren. Right. Uh, That's right. That's right. Because you, in a way you speak in, in, in their language. Yeah. In it's, their, you think in the way that they think in terms of mystery. Yeah, it's good for, uh, for uh, yeah, really you know, Jewish people, unsaved people, saved people, yes. I mean, it, it's all that, yes. Yeah. And you're, you're convicting me because I have to give it to my relatives. <laughs> I have to give it to my relatives, actually, yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk for a moment, a moment about uh, this set of DVDs. Uh, there are uh, four uh, cases yes. here. Each one has three DVDs in it, and each DVD is a mystery. This one happens to have the mystery of the Leper King, the Yomo Mysteries, yes. and the mystery of the, the rains. But you, you, we have here... 12 mysteries, each yeah. one presented on a DVD uh, presentation. Yeah, these are and DVDs. They're yeah. wonderful. Uh, I've watched uh, three of them mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, by myself, mm -hmm. watching them, and what I was thinking as I watched them was I, I should there should be other people here. Mm -hmm. uh, at least a dozen other people should be here with me because this needs to be seen by several people. Mm. Uh, it's very instructive. Well, thank you. Th these are... These give the fullest, if you want to get deepest into, because the mysteries, like the Book of Mysteries, some of these pages, a lot of them could be books in themselves. You want to get the deepest into the revelations of that. They, these, are a, these are some of these mysteries to get the deepest into it. And there, there's visuals and there's DVD and you can show it, you can mm -hmm. take it yourself. And, but yeah, you'll get deep that, the, Sanh the secret of the Sanhedrin, the Masada mystery, something that was hidden in Masada yeah. for 2,000 years from God, the secret of the eighth day, the most mystical day of God in the Bible, period. Uh, the Mishkan clue linked to the very, the, giving the time of Messiah's birth, a whole, the, whole other subject. Um, the, so, the mystery of the trees or the Illinois has to do with, has, holds a secret for the end time. So there's, there, there's, so you'll, 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 you'll begin to learn them here and then those ones you want to get very deep into them, it'll, it'll be cool for you or your church, your Bible study. Yeah. Mysteries. Uh, again, if you place something in the form of a mystery, immediately you've got Somebody sitting around the campfire, everybody loves a mystery. Let me tell you about something that happened, you know, and you won't believe this, but it actually happened. Yeah. And you've got everybody's attention. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what, that's what yes, the book that's of mystery book is, is all about. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that. Yeah. At one point in the book, the, the teacher takes the disciple into something called the chamber of books and says, and says, how long do you think it would take you to read one of these ancient books? And he, Says uh, um, to really read it a month to really learn this, and he says, "Okay, how about for the the top of the shelf? Well, you know, you know, a year. How about for the whole the this whole case? It would take a lifetime. All this I can never do it." Well, he says, "He said that's why you have eternity in heaven because that eternity is how long it takes to know God." Mm. <laughs> that's it. There's no end, and and God has so much more to show us that can change our lives. You know, Paul uses the, the word mystery a lot. Be, you know, behold, I show you a mystery. Yes. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed a yes. moment in the twinkling of an yes. eye. Okay, already you've got my attention. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And again, I'm, I encourage it. I'm not doing this because I don't need to plug this, but encourage you also, to, if you have unsaved loved ones, you have people who need to know God, listen, they'll just like Gary said, wait, it's a mystery. Maybe they'll say, if you gave them a track, they may say, well, I don't know. Give them a, people are giving us gift and people are getting saved, you know, as well as to bless your life. The thing about you is that you travel, you speak, and it's always about something uh, exciting and new. Mm. Mm. Things are unfolding at a very rapid rate right now, aren't oh, they? Oh yeah, yeah. Th yeah. Things have been accelerating not only in America, what's happening in the world and Israel, Middle East, so much so that we were just talking before and saying it's so much is happening that even in, in a few months we can't even plan out what we're going to speak about because so much is happening prophetically. Let's talk about mysteries yeah. because the mysteries are happening everywhere right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One recently happened in New York City That's and right. you and I talked about yeah. it before we went on. Yeah, this is, you know, the, the har harbingers have not stopped just because, you know, America has not stopped in its descending from God. And so that's, for those who don't know the harbinger, it's the warning signs, the yes. prophetic signs. Well, when you look at the template of the harbinger, the, the book that I wrote, uh, of the last days of Israel, they were worshiping a god. The god was Baal or Baal. Mm -hmm. So Baal was the god that they turned to when they turned away from God. He's the god of sexual immorality. He's the god that they offered their children to. He's the God that they persecuted the prophets to. He's the God of really uh, just when, you, when a nation has known God, rejects God, this is, this is in one form or another it's Baal. So now we're watching America, a nation founded by God, 
and before founded for the glory of God, founded after the pattern of Israel, and now we're watching America turn away, the same pattern of Israel, and we're watching America endorse sexual immorality, uh, offer, killing millions of its unborn children, per, beginning to persecute believers, and, and the same thing. It's, it's about, so so th could the sign of Baal actually appear in America? Mm -hmm. And the answer is amazingly so. I mean, you think, like, well, why, why would anybody have anything to do with anything with Baal? Most people don't even know about Baal except believers, you know. But it happened. It happened very recently in New York City. I, w I went down there to witness when they unveiled it. In New York City, they, they constructed a replica of the arch to Baal, the arch from uh, Syria, Palmyra, Syria, where they were the major center of Baal worship. The people would go through the arch to worship the god Baal. They, they reconstructed this arch in New York City, right in uh, City Hall Park, right actually you, within sight of, gr of Ground Zero. And, all. and they had this big ceremony. They, they had it covered with a sheet. They unveiled it. They had music, Middle Eastern music playing that you could imagine played during the worship of Baal. They had leaders. They had the... the the um, deputy mayor of New York there to celebrate, and this one. And if you, when you read the Harbinger, it said that when they erected these Harbingers, they almost always use one word, and that word is defiance. They use the word mm. defiance over and over again because in ancient Israel, before they were destroyed, they kept doing these things in the spirit of defiance. Well, the woman says we are doing this as an act of defiance. Mm. So here, the the Baal, the the sign of Baal. They, they even had, by the way, they even had a plaque on the floor that said Temple of Baal. And so here the sign of Baal, sign of a nation that once knew God, that is turned away, that is, that is called evil good and good evil in America, in New York, the, the place of the harbingers. And interesting because they were actually rebuilding, a te the, the, see the building, the Temple of Baal was destroyed recently in Syria, ancient temple by ISIS. Yes. Now ISIS, now in the harbinger, one of the first harbingers is the sign of the terrorist, and the Assyrians they attack Israel. It's a sign of it was a sign of judgment. Well, Assyrians are the inventors of terrorism. I mean, they're the, they're the fathers of all terrorism. ISIS is literally descended from the Assyrians. It's literally the Assyrian Empire. They literally have the blood of many of them have the blood of the Assyrians. They're from uh, Iraq and Syria, and they you know the ancient Assyrians would practice decapitation, and then they would display it exactly what ISIS does. And so here in the Harbinger, ancient Israel before it was destroyed, they're rebuilding what the Assyrians destroyed. Well now, literally, in New York City, America was rebuilding what the Assyrians destroyed. I mean, literally. I mean, exact. Hmm. So very, very ominous thing. And it's a mystery that's not a mystery. It, it, that is to say, it's been unveiled in our day. Anyone with eyes to see and ears to hear uh, can see what's happening. Yes, with eyes to, <laughs> to see, most do not. You know, crazy. If they knew what they were doing, they never do it. But believe, there were believers there witnessing this too. Wow. Yeah. Uh, your book, by the way, mm -hmm. and I want, wanted to uh, just open this okay. up uh, to the table of contents, and it has a list of mysteries yes. with page numbers. Yes. And, and I and I believe it's one per page. Yes. And it's. And yes. guess, guess what? There are 365 of them. That is right. And and as I read this, and, I, and I've read uh, uh, almost yes. all of this book, I must say, wow. uh, because it pulls you along. Yes. And, and it really has 365 mysteries in yes. it. You say, what in the world <laughs> could he be talking about? How can you get 365 <laughs> mysteries? <laughs> well, I'm, you know, if the Harbinger is the revealing of a mystery of the Shemitah's this is literally as hundreds of mysteries, which I believe are, you know, God is, there's no end to God. There's no end to his works. No, and so I believe some of the greatest mysteries, it mystery, has mysteries of the age or mysteries, hidden mysteries from the writings of the rabbis, you know, mysteries of the end times, mysteries of, that you'll never see in English in the Bible, but it's there, incredible things in the Bible. Um, mm -hmm. Mysteries of, of heaven, you know, also mysteries of your life, because, you know, that's part of the mystery. You know, we, we come to the Lord, it's a mystery. Why are we here? You know, so, so all those things. And the, the other thing is that yeah, I feel that we are going through some very dramatic times ahead. And so that God's people have to be strong. It's not just to know, okay, you know, I have the I have my prophecy chart right, but you need to be strong. You know, so it's not only not only to be ho hopefully not only just to be blown away by the Lord, which mm -hmm. is awesome always, but also at the end of each mystery there's a way to apply the mystery to your life to change your life. It's about it's about getting strong. It's about changing your life for for victory. You know, well, once uh, a mystery has been revealed to you, it becomes a challenge. And yeah. as we discussed uh, earlier, before we came on today, 
Uh, it, it occurred to me while reading your book that a, a mystery is a marvelous teaching tool. Yeah. Because if you say the word mystery, people say, what is it? I, I want to know about the mystery. And right? God is the God, yeah, and God is the God of revelation, reveal. That means take away the veal. That means, you know, so, so exactly. And so these are things that many of them have come to me over the years of te- you know, teaching. Others came as I'm writing it. You know, I had it writing this. And I really had it, the biggest challenge was how to concentrate because there's so much in the mystery. Yeah. How to put it on one page. You know, that was the biggest challenge I had. You know, and so every day I had to, I said, Lord, just give it. And I had about this about, I had to do four a day to get this thing because it's about twice as much as is in the harbinger of anything. So they have that. And the other thing is I felt like with the harbinger, I built a story around it. So in a sense, so that you're, there's a man who goes into the desert and he meets a man called the teacher. And the teacher takes him on a one year odyssey or one year journey on mountaintops, caverns, secret chambers, chambers mm-hmm. of vessels. Yeah. And every day he opens up a mystery of God. So it has the story and it's, it's the teacher giving that. But so therefore, as you're doing it, you're really taking along, you're taken along the journey. And, and, and it's really to you. you know? And so, that, so therefore, because there's three, it's a year in the desert or a 365, you can read it as a devotional, except different from a devotional, you're getting a mystery every day. It's not you know, like a, a nice insight, but it's, a, it's that. And, but you can read it right through. People are reading right through. It's, it's, it's concentrated, but read it right through. And then there are others who will do what you just look at the table of contents. I'll read it anywhere. I like this yeah. mystery. So you can read it forwards, backwards, sideways. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. but, but, it's, but the idea is there's, there's no end to the awesome, amazing mysteries of God. What, what is a devotional after all? A devotional is, is being surprised by a revelation from God. And that's a mystery. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a good thing to be surprised. Yes. Uh, we talked a minute ago about uh, this incredible thing that happened in New York City, the, the Gate of Baal yes. from Palmyra and, yes. and this ceremony and so forth. Yes. Uh, we're living in the age of apostasy, I yes. think. And you have yes. a, a mystery of the apostasy. Yes, yes. Now this is something, this is an example of the Bible is so amazing. I mean one word has so much and people miss the word. We, we know that in the end times there'll be, it says there'll be a great falling away. We know yeah. that. And we can see that. And that, the, word in, the word in the Bible is apostasia. You know, and so we get apostasy. Now we hear what's apostasy? Well it's the falling away from faith. So we're, we witness that. We see that. But there's more to the word. There's a hidden thing in that word that explains exactly what's happening. Apostasia, come in Greek, it literally means to depart from the state of being. That's what it means. So here, what does it mean? In the end times, when you see a departure, for, uh, the, actually the rejection of faith, you will also see a departure from the state of being. What does that mean? Men, you will see men departing from the state of manhood. Women from the state of womanhood. Marriage from the state of marriage. Family from the state of family. Children from the state of children. Humanity from human. So the word destabilization comes to mind. That goes with it. it. It all goes with it. See, you know, if if creation came from the word, yeah. If you if you go away from the word, you're going to go. You're going to depart from creation. Okay. So this is. I see what you're talking about. Yeah. And so apostasy uh, means to move away from from a, the state of a state, from the state of, of or a fir- yeah. firm. Uh, firmly established location, departing a location, yeah, or yeah, or a state of a state of being, or a state of being. You know, you know, the departure from these things. Yeah. Uh, and you, what do you read today, or what do you see on the web? You see things like gender reassignment, and you know, and the, the the clear cut uh, distinction between man and woman is being blurred now. Wiped out. There's every gradation yes. you can think of. Be- and yes. That's what you're talking. Exactly, about. and it's and it's all there in that ancient word. You know. So so in the same, it's not an accident that in the same day you're seeing people go against the word of God, they're they're going against the order of creation mm-hmm. itself. Yeah, that's one. That's a, that's just a, now there's something called now you know of course you know the mystery of the shemitah. Well, there's something in the book of mysteries called the mystery of the smicha. Now you don't have to get you don't, you don't have to you don't have to get the thing. But here's the thing, and that is this: that before a sacrifice could be offered up, the, yeah. the priest had to perform something called the shemicha, or the, and, and that was a that was the, if it was a sin offering, had to take the sacrifice, it was brought to the priest, had to put his palms on its head, press it on its head, or touch the, the, the sacrifice of the head, and it, that was, he was identifying with the sacrifice and, and putting his sins on it, or the sins of the offer, offering. And he would say that, he would, he would confess the sins on ta, onto that. Now it happened on Yom Kippur, happened, but it happened other times. So here's the smicha. Now here's the question. If Messiah is our sin offering, which he is, could the smicha have been performed? And here's the mystery. 
Why was Messiah take, betrayed to the Sanhedrin? Because in that was the priests of Israel. The priests of Israel are, are the ones who must deliver up the sacrifice. Even though they don't know what they're doing, they're doing it in sin, God is perfect. Mm-hmm. So here, and what did they do? It says when they pronounced that on him, they pronounced him guilty, they all started buffeting him in the Greek. It says buffeting him, according to the smicha, the hands of the priest must touch the head of the sacrifice. And it actually in the Greek says, it's, I mean, it says literally the palms, because it's buffeting. Palms, which is exactly what has to happen for the smicha. It has to make contact. Then they have to confess the sin onto the sacrifice. Well, w- well was that, that happening then? What happened? Caiaphas said he is guilty of what? Blasphemy. That wasn't, according to the mystery, that wasn't Messiah's sin, that was Caiaphas' sin. That was the high priest's sin. Wow. That was, and the priests represent Israel. Israel represents the world. That's the sin of man. Man is God, blasphemy. So they were performing without the smicha of God, and only then could he be offered up. And then what did they do? Like on Yom Kippur, the high priest stood in front of the multitude with two goats, one goat on his right, one goat on his left. And they would have to decide, in front of a multitude, decide which one is going to escape and which one is going to die for sin. What happened when Messiah, before he died, Two men, not two goats, two men, Messiah, Barabbas, standing in front of the multitude. One is to escape, one is to be chosen to die. That is exactly what's performed on Yom Kippur. And so they do that, and so Messiah is the one who will die. But even more, there's an ancient writing in the rabbis which describe how they did this, and they said that the two goats had to look exactly alike, so you couldn't Mm. tell them a lot, you couldn't tell them apart. So could it be that Messiah and Barabbas looked alike? Maybe, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Messiah is the, you would think, how could you have two so different things? Messiah is the son of the father. Barabbas is a criminal, a murderer. Yeah. But Barabbas, there's a mystery, another mystery here. We all hear about Barabbas. Barabbas is just Greek for a Hebrew name, Bar Abba, which means the son of the father. Hmm. So here you have the son of the father, and you have the son of the father. Oh, and, 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 two alternatives of the same. Yes, two, two pictures of the same yes. thing. Yes, yes, and that's yeah. what you know. When, when a sacrifice died, it was like they become one. You know, the two, the the one who dies is you know who dies for me. He becomes one with me. Messiah becomes one with me to die for me, that I might become one with him. So here you have Messiah dying the death of Barabbas, hmm. that we might become we we're we're Barabbas. You know, we're, that we might become Barabba, the son of the father. Wow, if you find this interesting. Uh, we're, we're talking to Jonathan Kahn today and <clears throat> his book of mysteries is basically 365 of the things yes. you've just heard him talking about. If you can imagine multiplying by 365 that'll yeah. give you some idea of this yeah. book. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's no end, Gary. I mean, and God is awesome. There, there's something called, there's some things that have to do with mysteries about prophecy and history. Yeah. There's something called the Haftorah mystery. Now let me tell you what that is. And a lot of people don't have never heard that. But a Haftorah is every week, every Sabbath, in the synagogue, there is a chosen, appointed scripture read for that week. Uh-huh. The Haftorah is the prophet's portion. So this is this is from ancient times. I mean, ancient times they were doing this. So every from ancient times, there's a, there's a scripture appointed for every Sabbath. Now, 1948, God fulfills prophecy. God brings back Israel. When did it happen? May 14th, it was announced. May 15th, it went into effect. May 14th, David Ben-Gurion makes that announcement to the world. What day was it? It was Friday. Mm -hmm. He announced it just before the Sabbath came because the Sabbath was coming. So he announces it, and then it comes, Israel is born. Okay, May 15th. It was a Sabbath. So could it be, I wondered, could it be that God had an appointed scripture for 2,000 years to be on that, that day for that? Could it be? Well, here's the answer, Gary. This is good. Amazing thing is, yes. You know what the scripture was? On the birth of Israel, all around the world, all around every synagogue, being read, appointed, was Amos 9, and that day I will restore the fallen tabernacle of David. I will restore their captivity, they will come back to the land, they will build the land, they will sow, they will plant the land, mm. and no one will pluck them out. Wow. <laughs> Amos was, 9, it was quoted in the yes. New Testament, the book of Acts. Yes, that's right. It's linked to the church as well. Yeah. But it's, but, and, and the church is linked to Israel. You know, here it is. And God had everything so exactly formed. That's the amazing thing of God. And you don't, the news will never tell you this, but that's what it was. That's what it was, yeah. And, and we are watching uh, right now, uh, 70 years later. Yes. 70 years yes. later. Yes. Seventy 
There's something very yeah. biblical about that number. Yes, uh, and, uh, and I know we'll talk about it another time, but, but and 70 nations gathered to go about <laughs> Jerusalem, and 70 yeah. is always there. And it's also going to be, at least in the Gregorian calendar, it'll be 50 years soon from, from 67, from, from Jerusalem. Yeah, so. We'll speak about Israel for a moment, because in my opinion, uh, at a certain point in, in the 20th century, uh, the world's attention was shifted to the nation Israel. It, it was a miracle. Yes. Uh, after World War II, yes. the thing that happened yes. was something that yes. couldn't happen. Yes. But God showed favor to the Jews. Yes. A- and and since then, the students of Bible prophecy have been watching Israel right. oh, every yeah. day. Oh yeah. And, and oh, I know yeah. you do too. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the centerpiece of God's plan. It's the centerpiece of prophecy. It always has been, always will be. Yeah. Why are the nations focusing on this little speck size of New Jersey? You know, uh, why? Uh, yeah. It makes no sense. It makes only sense because of God. That's it. The, the, no, other, no other thing. Why? It, you go there, no, you go to Jerusalem, it's a bunch of rocks. But the, it's the most fought over place in the history of the world. It you know? is. There's something about that. Yeah. There are several mysteries about that, by the way, you know, in the book of mysteries, too. The book of yeah. mysteries. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, Jonathan mentioned a minute ago, you could call this a daily devotional because it has 360. You can do it. It's also that. Yeah, you could. You could yeah. and, and each of these mysteries challenges your, uh, yes. your imagination. Mm. Uh, uh, and this is a good thing because, yeah. because you, when you think of God, you need to stretch your mind a little bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. He's way beyond everyday yeah. living. Yeah, the yeah the first very first uh, very first one you probably remember Gary this is really to open your your mind in it and that is that it's it's the mystery of the jar the jar of infinity. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, well, just well, yeah. it's just I'm just it's not so, so much you've got my but, attention. No, well, I didn't want to get your attention, <laughs> but 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 just, just to say that the the question that the teacher asked the disciple at the beginning he says, "Can that which is little contain that which is big?" And he says, "Well, of course not, but you can. There's a mystery." How can we contain the fullness of God? We're, we're finite. He's infinite. There's a way. And that, that's, that's the opening of the Book of Mysteries to open up to all that God has. There's no end to God. Well, see, already you've got my curiosity. <laughs> oh, <wait. laughs> do, do you know, you know, yeah, the very first, and this is not as it was planned, but you know, the very, I mean, you know this, of course, the very first word in the very first name in the Bible, Elohim, Elohim. And it, even that, the name of God means God. Yeah. That has a mystery right in there. Why is it Elohim? Elohim doesn't technically mean God. It means, literally, it means God's, but it's only one God. Yeah. It's God. But when the, when the Hebrew does that, it's telling you that the reality behind that word is so big, is so gigantic, that that word cannot contain it, cannot contain the infant. So what it's saying is that whatever you think of God is, he's more, he's bigger. Whatever you've known for theology, for two, it doesn't matter how old you are, he's, we, we don't know the half of God. So it might be the Hebrew way of saying something infinite. In, yes, infinite, yeah, really, infinite and gigantic. It's saying it breaks the, breaks the boundaries, breaks the boundaries. Um, and we also have mysteries of the rabbis in here. I could just, you know, yeah. Go, go, go. okay. That's well, what, that would be good. I, yeah, well, the, 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 I don't you, want you to give the whole book away. No, no, no. I, I, if we were here for months, <laughs> we could not give that book away because it's too fun. It's so much fun. But, but the, there's the, uh, one of the things is there are also streams of mysteries where you're reading one and then you'll read another one that yeah. is another puzzle piece and at the end it all comes together. Well, there are streams of the hidden writings of the rabbis. Do you know, and most people don't, that the rabbis actually gave a time where by which ma- the Messiah of Israel had to come to Israel. They, they gave the time. And when was it? And they based it on, the, the mystery is called, and the book is called the scepter of Judah. They, that, that, when, that thing is, that when the blessing of Judah is given in Genesis, it says, the, 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 it says the, the scepter shall not depart from Judah until Shiloh comes. And they tell you this is Messiah. So they said, they, they said this, that Messiah must come before we lose our power, before we lose, before we lose the power over life and death. So here's what happened. They record, they said, we lost that power in this year. And it was when the Romans took away from Judah the power of over life and death, capital, capital, you know that. So they took it out. And so, this, this, so the rabbi said, Messiah had to come by that time. Mm-hmm. Well, when was the time? They, they, they dated it. They said it was just about the year 30 AD. 30 AD. Wow. Remember, Messiah, Jesus, the rabbis. I mean, if the rabbis are saying this, you got. I mean, they don't believe in Jesus, and they're saying, and they don't even realize it. How true is Messiah that he has come? How true? The mystery, uh, dare I say, that has not been revealed to, to it, contemporary Israel at this point. No. 
But we're on the verge of something like that. I, I think uh, that these mysteries will be open at a certain point. Yes, open yeah. To, to Daniel. Dan, Daniel says there are things that are being held until the end, you know. And, and I believe that's the case. I, I mean, I believe there are things that are to be revealed at the end. And I believe there's a reason why, you know, Israel and the church have been separated for 2,000 years, you know. But each has a part of the mystery. But when they start coming together, that's when certain things can come out. I believe we're in that time. We're in that time. The Book of Mysteries, and by the way, uh, we're offering this on our online uh, bookstore, prophecywatchers.com. Just click on the bookstore, scroll down to Jonathan Kahn, and you'll find uh, the Book of Mysteries, and uh, we're offering that. We are uh, going to uh, take a moment, and I I want you to explain what this is, because right here I have uh, four uh, beautifully uh, arranged cases of DVDs. 12 DVDs about the mysteries. And and in fact, let me just take volume four here. Uh, the end time revelation mysteries. Uh, the Yute Vav He. The I the Am, I mystery. am mysteries. mysteries. Uh, and by the way, I've watched uh, not all of these, but many of them, and they're extremely well produced. I, I love what you've done. Mm. You are a very gifted oh. teacher. You get people's attention. But and you're a preacher, mm-hmm. but I, the highest compliment I can pay <laughs> to you is that you're a teacher. Mm-hmm. Well, I think because I, when people yeah. w- uh, finish hearing mm-hmm. what you have to say, they have learned something. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, there's always more. There's always more. Those will go. Those and I. Those will go deepest to get deepest yeah. into some of these mysteries. They have. I, I just saw it by the way here. The Yoma. There's the Yoma mystery. The mystery of the leper king. The San secret of the Sanhedrin. The Masada mystery, really amazing thing that's hidden in Masada. Um, the Hanukkah end time mystery, which is really the yeah. most detailed blueprint of the end times. You know, um, there's there's even things about yeah the, the, about the mystery of Messiah's birth of when it was, and I mean there's there's so much. Here. So that those are the deep, if you want to get deep into the deep into some of the and some of those things that are that are introduced to the Book of Mysteries. That'll be the, the deep the deep thing there. And these are made for showing to, to a, a group. And you can I, you can <clears throat> yeah you can do it yourself. You, you can do it for yourself. You can sure do it for can. a Bible study, a church. Absolutely. Oh yeah. yeah. I was yeah. watching them by myself and I was thinking <laughs> there should be 30 other people in this room right oh, now cool. because they need to hear about this. Cool. This. So uh, again, uh, go to the online bookstore <coughs> prophecywatchers.com and scroll down to uh, Jonathan Kahn and you'll find the Book of Minis- Mysteries and you'll also find a package uh, that includes all of these DVDs, uh, further explanations and demonstrations of the mysteries, and the book as well. And by the way, not only will you get the book, but you'll get a copy of the Prophecy Watcher. So uh, we have a package whereby you can get the DVDs, the book of mysteries, and a copy of our magazine. And by I'll, the way, I'm thinking of something. You're going to be speaking. Uh, at our prophecy conference, the Blessed Hope Prophecy Forum, October 13th through 15th uh, uh, this year. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned to me earlier, that's a long time. A lot could happen mm-hmm. between yes. now and oh, then. Yeah. I asked Jonathan, what are you going to be speaking on? He says, who knows? <laughs> we'll, <see. laughs> well, especially now, so much is happening. Yeah. So who knows? I mean, I said, let's see what happens next week. You know, and then let, let's go from there. So much is happening. Yeah. And and I'll just a, a note, Gary, yeah. with with that people, uh, if they people, I the, my my biggest blessing in that is I was actually doing a book signing, and the person next to me says, "I got to tell you, I've been witnessing to my friend for years. Never, I gave him a gift, I gave him the Book of Mysteries, and they came to the Lord. So people are coming to the Lord through the Book of Mysteries. So it's great to give to people, you know. And at the end, there's actually a call to salvation because the the disciple, the wanderer, gets saved. So it's great to give to people as a gift, whether they're saved or not saved. And that's that's my biggest thing. I mean, to take it for yourself, it can change your life if you apply it. But bless other people. That's that's our that's our the biggest joy for me. So, what brings people to Christ, uh, in your opinion? Uh, and we've all witnessed. Uh, yeah. Sometimes people receive Christ. Sometimes they don't. Mm-hmm. Sometimes their curiosity is slightly ar- ar- aroused, and yeah. you think, well, maybe next week or next yeah. month they will. Um, but when you uh, confront someone with uh, something mysterious that pulls them yeah, along, something they correct. haven't thought about that's before, that's correct. That may be that is correct why because, this book works that way. Because they don't feel like they're being hit over the head like yeah. or you're being accusing them. Like, wait a minute, did you hear, have you ever heard about the mystery of the, what? What do you mean? What, what is that? What do you mean yeah. there's something behind it? And that's how people who are not saved, it doesn't matter. There's no barrier there because they're coming in. That's exactly right. Yeah. You know. Modern Israel is a mystery to many people. Yes. 
uh, they can't understand what's going on over there. A lot of people don't have not been educated about Israel. Mm -hmm. They think the little upstart nation uh, probably won't last very long. Mm -hmm. It'll be there for just a little while, mm -hmm. and then and it'll mm -hmm. be gone. Uh, Israel itself is a mystery. Right? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, and I mean, <laughs> it, it it begins the mystery of Israel. Even the name begins with a a divine wrestling match with a man, yeah. and this, which is really what Israel is. That's another mystery right there. What it, you know? What is Israel? Well, it comes from that. It's it's the it's the name of a people. It means Jewish people. You know for. Who will wrestle with a man who turns out to be God in the end? <laughs> you know, just, right? like yeah, just like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. They're wrestling, but in the end they win. But they're always wrestling, and that's hidden in the name Israel, right there. It's wow. the first wrestling, which is by the way, in there. This one called the mystery of the wrestler, the, the mystery wrestler. You know, but that's it. The, he wrestles with God. What? Yeah. There's no end, and the wrestling is going on right now. It's has has Israel ever has, have they ever not wrestled, Gary? Yeah. <laughs> they're always wrestling with the world, wrestling with this, but in the end they prevail. And we wrestle a lot with the Lord. If you're born again, but you prevail. What would you like to conclude with today? Oh boy! Oh boy! <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> this is so. Much. Um, I'll just I'll just throw in one, one quick thing, but really, you know, you're you're watching this, and you and at one point it reveals one of the names of God, and and you might say, well, I don't know the name. Of, what's the name of God? You say the name of God every time. When you, every, whenever you say, I'm Jonathan, you say, I'm Gary, you're saying, I am first. 